Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, welcome to the graduation ceremony for OCS Class 1021, consisting of 100 candidates. The order of events for today's ceremony is as follows. At 0900, Captain Hazenberg, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, and the guest of honor, Rear Admiral Chatfield, United States Navy, Naval War College President, will arrive. The graduates will rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. Captain Hazenberg and Rear Admiral Chatfield will address the graduating class and the class will receive the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the commanding officer. Ladies and gentlemen, the official party will now arrive. <laughs> Officer Training Command Newport, arriving. Naval War College President arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Butts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you have fashioned and created us as a people and called us as a nation for a place of trust and leadership in the world. We honor this day our newest naval officers and we ask for your special blessing upon them as they embark on their journey into the fleet. Father, today our hearts rejoice, and the day these graduates have dreamed of has finally arrived. So many are proud of their achievements. However, we are mindful that our achievements are possible only through the life you have given us, through the parents who have loved and nourished us, through the host of peers and friends along life's way who encouraged us, and those here at Officer Training Command who guided and molded each life, developing them into our nation's newest naval leaders. No one person is an island. And none are perfect, and each is a witness to your watchful care and forgiving grace. With every accomplishment and privilege came added responsibility, and each one of these officers stands here today, accepting of the duty that our nation has entrusted to them. Bless all those who have stood by these we honor, and give them an extra portion of your love. 
Watch over and protect them as they head off to their new commands. Today, they stand on the shoulders of the greatest naval leaders of history, who've inspired generations to fight for the freedoms that make our country great. Give them the strength and courage to carry on that legacy. Be with us today and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Mark Hazenberg, Officer Training Command, Newport. OTC and staff, family members, and friends who are joining us virtually, and most importantly, soon to be commissioned officers of class 10 Tech 2 1. Good morning. I am excited to welcome 100 newest ensigns into one of the most prestigious, challenging, and rewarding careers in our nation, that of the Naval Officer. And I'd like to point out that this is the largest class we have graduated in my tenure here at Officer Training Command, and I think that's fantastic. To the family and friends joining us virtually today, I applaud you for the great work you have done preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Thank you for the support you have given them. It has enabled them to make the sound choices they have made. And we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. And we are grateful to you for your continued support. To the graduates here today, as commanding officer of officer training command Newport, I am proud of all of you. You all had many other options in volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism, your willingness to serve. I can assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. You completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You overcame obstacles. Nothing was handed to you these past 13 weeks except opportunity, the opportunity to make something more of yourself to learn, to grow, and to lead. And you seized that opportunity. You embraced it. And today, you reap its reward. I congratulate each and every one of you for that significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity, to lead sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You will be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world and around the clock. Know that you are going to do significant and meaningful work for our country. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you, the highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, commitment. I urge you to continue to uphold the highest standards of excellence and integrity. Character matters. As writer George Eliot once said, character is destiny. Your choices in life will determine where you end up. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best and give your country your best efforts because nothing else will suffice. In closing, I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. Each of you are about to embark upon a great adventure an adventure in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you have ever had or will ever have. And regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life upon which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is my honor and privilege this morning to introduce to you our first guest speaker since the start of this pandemic, Rear Admiral Shoshana Chatfield, president of the Naval War College, 
a native of garden garden grove california and graduate from boston university she has honorably served her navy and her nation for over thirty years she is a career naval aviator having flown multiple helicopter platforms her afloat assignments include tours at multiple helicopter combat support squadrons as well as in the helicopter sea combat community she was a 20th commanding officer of helicopter combat support squadron 5 and upon his disestablishment, the first commanding officer of Helicopter Sea Combat Squadron 25, the Island Knights. She was a type wing commander for Helicopter Sea Combat Wing U.S. Pacific Fleet from 2011 to 2013. Ashore, she has served on multiple staffs to include the Joint Staff J-5 Plans and Policy Directorate, Central and Eastern European Branch, the staff of the Chief of Naval Operations, and was a U.S. Deputy Military Representative to the NATO Military Committee. She served as Assistant Professor of Political Science at the United States Air Force Academy from 2001 to 2004, and she has served in Afghanistan. Most recently, Rear Admiral Chatfield commanded Joint Region Marianas from January 2017 to August 2019. As President of the Naval War College here in Newport, Rear Admiral Chatfield is responsible for educating and developing leaders from all services, U.S. government agencies and departments, and international navies. Her leadership is absolutely essential to the continued success of the world's greatest navy, and we are truly fortunate to have her here with us today to share some thoughts with the Navy's 100 newest ensign. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today. Good morning. morning All right, I want everyone to take a deep breath, let it out, and put a smile on your face because this is happening. Good morning and welcome to all the family, friends, and loved ones who have logged on to this ceremony today to celebrate the commissioning of these 100 new naval officers. Thank you for logging on. I wish in different circumstances that you could be here today because it is your support of these fine men and women that has provided them a strong foundation which will carry them through many long days and challenging situations in the future. Thank you for being part of a very proud and strong Navy family. And now to the officer candidates of class 10 TAC 21. Depending on your prior service, I want to congratulate each of you on achieving what is either your first career milestone or your biggest career milestone yet in your Naval careers. And you've done it in these unprecedented times. There are undoubtedly more challenges and more triumphs in your future, but your commitment has been tested rigorously in these past 13 weeks, and each of you has proven that you are up to the tasks that lay ahead. I remember so vividly being in your shoes and how excited I was to pack every single thing that I owned into my new 1988 Ford Escort GT to move down to Pensacola, Florida to begin flight school. I was so full of excitement and resolve that the next phase of my training would be a resounding success. And I expect that each of you here today has that same element of excitement, breathlessness, and anticipation in you for your departure and your transition to your next assignment. But when I got there, I became aware that there were things that were going to be hard for me 
and harder for me than others in my flight school class. Turns out I didn't have a background in mechanical things and it was very challenging for me as I sat in my first aircraft engines class to grasp the concepts. In fact, I knew I was in trouble when the instructor said, the engine oil transducer looks like a spark plug. I thought, oh boy, I am in trouble. Serious trouble. That first exam didn't go well, and I knew I'm going to have to pull something out to make it through that course. But I don't want to be last. I want to be at the top. I tried everything to master the material. They had told us, hey, try studying while bouncing a ball on the ground. That didn't work for me. I put the NATOPS manual under my pillow. Osmosis didn't work for me. So I'm here to tell you, you must do sometimes extraordinary things to succeed for yourself, to ensure your own success. I recorded every word of that manual, except for the short chapter on air conditioning. I recorded it and I put it in my car and I played it everywhere I went. Anytime I was driving, I was listening to my own voice, quoting that manual and those chapters. So here comes the final exam. And I got a really high score on that exam. In fact, I only missed one question. I'll bet you can guess what question that was. It was about the air conditioning system in the TH-57. I'd taken one shortcut in my deep dive to correct my deficiency, and that one shortcut, although it didn't hold me back, taught me a lesson. Shortcuts don't work. So I'm here to tell you that you are going to find areas where you're going to have to work harder than you observe that others are working. Whether it's because of aptitude or experience or exposure, it's going to happen. And so you've got to constantly assess where your strengths are and where your weaknesses lie. Now the great thing about this Navy is that you've got shipmates. And if you look to your right and left, these are the first ones maybe that you've met, but there's always gonna be a shipmate who has a strength you don't have and who has a weakness that you don't have. So I'd ask you to draw on your strengths and to notice where a shipmate needs help. And when you're in your area of weakness, to ask for help. Once you have put the work in to successfully complete the next phase of your training, and you go out to the operational fleet, I want to ask you to focus on three things. Earn your warfare qualification, learn your job, and discover that thing that you have, that unique gift that you have that you can offer to the world's greatest Navy. So when you get to your next, uh, sorry, your first command, your first operational command, as a junior officer, find out what you have to do to get qualified. Earning your warfare qualification is the next big milestone in your career. And you've got to pursue it with energy and aggressiveness. The process of mastering the technical and tactical aspects of your work will challenge you immensely. But your ability to achieve what you already have is an indication that you have an aptitude for success. And you're gonna build that into a habit. Focus intensely on that work. Work vigorously. And seek to get qualified early. At the same time, it's very important for you to learn your assigned position within the organization. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you learn every detailed aspect of your role as the avionics division officer or the gunnery officer or the first lieutenant. 
it's equally important that you learn how to lead people. This is a manpower, human capital organization, and we have got to develop depth up, depth on the bench. So part of learning your ground job, as aviators call it, is learning how to lead people. You've learned a lot about leadership already, but you have to commit to future development, constant professional development in leadership and focus on developing your team. And that's where you get to practice the values of the Navy, what you've learned here about Navy core values. And I stress that respect is at the foundation of all of those values. And I wanna thank all of the instructors here. And we've got so many in the back of the room and I know that there are others uh, that are over and still working uh, on other aspects of this organization, but I wanna thank you uh, that for the time and the personal attention that you've given to each of these new officers in our fleet. So lastly, I'm gonna challenge each new officer to think about your unique talent. What is it that you have more of than anyone else in this room? Each of you has something. And it's gonna become more and more apparent to you the longer you stay in our Navy. You have a unique gift. And your commands are gonna have gaps. If only somebody were to take on this, and that person might be you, because your unique gift matches that gap in your command. Don't try to copy someone else's. You've got something, each of you, and you've got to offer it. And offering the thing that's in unique in yourself oftentimes means that you're taking on a risk because no one else did it. But that's the thing that makes our Navy great. We're an all-volunteer force, and when you volunteer to give that thing of yourself that no one else can, that's when our Navy grows. And that's when our teams get better. And that's when we know that we're gonna win. So I wanna talk to you about one officer that I had, Gabe Phils working for me when I was the commanding officer of HSC 25. His unique gift was in breaking down difficult concepts and translating them to officers who didn't really understand what was behind the procedures in the book. He just really had a great way of explaining it. So he could have done that individually with people who needed help, but he took on the task of reorganizing the training and rewriting the lectures for all the pilots in our wardroom, more than 60 pilots. And every single one of us was better for his effort. And it's hard not to just take up the training manual and do it the way the last person did because we're all familiar with that. Just break out the canned lecture, just give it. He wasn't willing to accept that. He knew we could be better and he offered it. Now I'm a commanding officer and I'll tell you, a lot of people think, well, I've gotta be like the most charismatic person that was here before. Now I don't remember who that last charismatic officer was. I remember the officer who made us all better. That's what I noticed as a commanding officer. So don't get caught up in thinking that you've gotta be like someone else. Be like yourself and offer that gift that you have. Find your true talents, optimize them voluntarily for the United States Navy as your part of your service for our nation. So I've talked for too long. You're all buzzing with excitement. I can feel it. And you're all ready to take your oath and to hop into your own ensign mobiles, hug your families, and go off 
and serve in the fleet. And so I want to congratulate you again on your achievements and welcome you to the finest naval officer cadre of the world's greatest Navy. And if I can tell you one thing that you remember out of this speech and out of this time that we share together today, the Navy needs you right now to run after your next qualification. We need you to move with urgency and intention to get qualified. Go forth, Ensigns. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Admiral Chatfield. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. choose to say the word swear or affirm. I will read the word swear, but when you get there, if you choose to affirm this oath, you may do so. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy, do hereby accept such appointment and do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duty of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. Please be seated. The graduates assembled will now be recognized by the Admiral and the commanding officer for their achievements while undergoing training here at Officer Training Command Newport. Ensign Adams has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Adams is a graduate of Liberty University. Ensign Archer has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Archer is a graduate of University of Michigan. Ensign Arzadon has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to LHA-6 USS America in Sasebo, Japan. Ensign Arzadon is a graduate of San Diego State University. Ensign Atencio has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Ross in Rota, Spain. Ensign Atencio is a graduate of University of Colorado. Ensign Ballard has been designated a special warfare officer and will be assigned to Naval Special Warfare Center, Coronado, California. Ensign Ballard is a graduate of Auburn University. Ensign Brooks has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Laboon, DDG 58, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Brooks is a graduate of Maryland Global Campus. Ensign Arthur has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Cole, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Arthur is a graduate of American Military University. Ensign Arthur has been awarded the Commander Jack Levitt Leadership Award, having been chosen by his peers as a candidate who most inspired his class and personifies the highest standards of personal sound management practice and moral responsibility. 
Ensign Childs has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Mahan, DDG-72 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Childs is a graduate of University of Northwestern, St. Paul. Ensign Spenrath has been designated an intelligence officer and will be assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Spenrath is a graduate of National University. Ensign Cleland has been designated a Special Warfare Officer and will be assigned to Naval Special Warfare Center, Coronado, California. Ensign Cleland is a graduate of Southeastern University. Ensign Ballou has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Ballou is a graduate of University of Arkansas. Ensign Barfield has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS San Jacinto, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Barfield is a graduate of Norfolk State University. Ensign Barfield is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Barling has been designated a Nuclear Submarine Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Barling is a graduate of University of California, Davis. Ensign Barling is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Bennett has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to LPD-26, USS John P. Murtha, San Diego, California. Ensign Bennett is a graduate of University of Mississippi. Ensign Beanstalk has been designated a Special Warfare Officer and will be assigned to Special Warfare Officer School in Coronado, California. Ensign Beanstalk is a graduate of Dartmouth College. Ensign Blanton has been designated a Supply Corps Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Blanton is a graduate of Florida State University. Ensign Androff has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Androff is a graduate of Clemson University. Ensign Bennett has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bennett is a graduate of Florida State University. Ensign Roman Charies has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Roman Charies is a graduate of Southern New Hampshire University. Ensign Bailey has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Philippine Sea, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Bailey is a graduate of American Military University. Ensign Bloomfield has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Forrest Sherman, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Bloomfield is a graduate of California State University. Ensign Bowling has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Philippine Sea, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Bowling is a graduate of Miami University, Ohio. Ensign Bridges has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bridges is a graduate of Tarleton State University. Ensign Brzezowski has been designated a Special Warfare Officer and will be assigned to Naval Special Warfare Center, Coronado, California. Ensign Brzezowski is a graduate of University of Maryland. Ensign Buck has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Port Royal, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Buck is a graduate of Tennessee Technological University. Ensign Budakoffer has been designated a Supply Corps Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Budakoffer is a graduate of Piedmont University. Ensign Butler has been designated a Special Warfare Officer and will be assigned to Naval Special Warfare Center, Coronado, California. Ensign Butler is a graduate of Virginia Tech. Ensign Butler has been awarded the Chapel Clarity United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award for obtaining the highest overall grade in physical fitness while attending officer candidate school. Ensign Butler is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Cerulli has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Port Royal, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Cerulli is a graduate of Stanford University. Ensign Cerulli is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Cruz has been designated a Cryptologic Warfare Officer and will be assigned to Navy Information Operations Command. Ensign Cruz is a graduate of San Jose State University. Ensign Cummings has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Cummings is a graduate of DeVry University. Ensign DeBlaze has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Tortuga, Little Creek, Virginia. Ensign DeBlaze is a graduate of California State University, Fullerton. Ensign Deering has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Deering is a graduate of the University of Kansas. 
Ensign Dickerson has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Dickerson is a graduate of the University of Texas. Ensign Dickerson is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Dickman has been designated a nuclear submarine warfare officer and has been assigned to nuclear power school in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Dickman is a graduate of Kansas State University. Ensign Dowell has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Anchorage, San Diego, California. Ensign Dowell is a graduate of Arizona State University. Ensign Dugas has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Dugas is a graduate of Methodist University. Ensign Dugas is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Irwin has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Irwin is a graduate of Clemson University. Ensign Irwin is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Estudio Soto has been designated a Supply Corps officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Estudio Soto is a graduate of University of Arizona. Ensign Falachi has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Somerset, San Diego, California. Ensign Falachi is a graduate of George Washington University. Ensign Falachi is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Figueroa has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Figueroa is a graduate of University of Central Florida. Ensign Flores has been designated a Nuclear Submarine Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Flores is a graduate of the University of Arizona. Ensign Flores is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Franklin has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Laboon, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Franklin is a graduate of University of Chicago. Ensign Giro has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Giro is a graduate of Westfield State University. Ensign Greyhound has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Princeton, San Diego, California. Ensign Greyhound is a graduate of Webb Institute. Ensign Hart has been designated a Supply Corps Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Hart is a graduate of University of Georgia. Ensign Hart has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hart is a graduate of Excelsior College. Ensign Hartley has been designated a naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hartley is a graduate of University of Central Florida. Ensign Hirschberger has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hirschberger is a graduate of Princeton University. Ensign Holderby has been designated an intelligence officer and will be assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Holderby is a graduate from London School of Economics and Political Science. Ensign Holmes has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Chafee, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Holmes is a graduate of Northern Arizona University. Ensign Howe has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS WASP, LHD-1, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Howe is a graduate of Iowa State University. Ensign Hong has been designated a Nuclear Submarine Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Hong is a graduate of the University of California, Los Angeles. Ensign Emmerich has been designated an Aviation Maintenance Duty Officer. Ensign Emmerich is a graduate of University of Dubuque. Ensign Johnston has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Johnston is a graduate of University of Nebraska. Ensign Kerrigan has been designated a Supply Corps Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Kerrigan is a graduate of University of Nevada, Reno. Ensign Cook has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Cook is a graduate of Rocky Mountain College. Ensign Lara has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Princeton, San Diego, California. Ensign Lara is a graduate of University of Florida. Ensign Lobono has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS McCampbell, Everett, Washington. Ensign Lobono is a graduate of Oregon State University. 
Ensign McLeod has been designated an Explosive Ordnance Disposal Officer and will be assigned to Naval Diving and Salvage Training Center, Panama City Beach, Florida. Ensign McLeod is a graduate of Georgetown University. Ensign Maloney has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Maloney is a graduate of the University of Mississippi. Ensign Martin has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Martin is a graduate of Radford University. Ensign Masnick has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Chancellorsville, Yakuska, Japan. Ensign Masnick is a graduate of University of California, Santa Barbara. Ensign Masnick has been awarded the Chapel Clardy United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award for obtaining the highest overall grade in physical fitness while attending officer candidate school. Ensign Matetich has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Matetich is a graduate of the University of Alabama. Ensign Maxwell has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Stout, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Maxwell is a graduate of Kent State University. Ensign McAvoy has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Ramage, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign McAvoy is a graduate of University of Alabama. Ensign McCarthy has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Cowpens, San Diego, California. Ensign McCarthy is a graduate of Tulane University. Ensign McMahon has been designated a Civil Engineering Corps officer and will be assigned to Port Wyneme, California. Ensign McMahon is a graduate of Arizona State University. Ensign McVicker has been designated a Nuclear Submarine Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign McVicker is a graduate of Montana State University. Ensign Mizell has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS New York, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Mizell is a graduate of Chapman University. Ensign Mesman has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Rafael Peralta, Yakuska, Japan. Ensign Mesman is a graduate of the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. Ensign Miles has been designated a Surface Off Warfare Officer and will be assigned to LHD-1, the WASP, in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Miles is a graduate of Old Dominion University. Ensign Miller has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Miller is a graduate of Brigham Young University. Ensign Mills has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Mills is a graduate of St. Mary's College of California. Ensign Moores has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Ramage, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Moores is a graduate of the University of Connecticut. Ensign Neal has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Cole, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Neal is a graduate of Houston Baptist University. Ensign Neal is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Newell has been designated a nuclear submarine warfare officer and has been assigned to nuclear power school in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Newell is a graduate of Syracuse University. Ensign Okamura has been designated a supply corps officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Okamura is a graduate of Washington State University. Ensign Palmaquapio has been designated a Supply Corps officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Palmaquapio is a graduate of Southern Connecticut State University. Ensign Parsons has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Parsons is a graduate of Texas Tech University. Ensign Pellegrino has been designated a Surface Warfare Nuclear Officer and will be assigned to USS Oak Hill, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Pellegrino is a graduate of Jacksonville University. Ensign Pataco has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Pataco is a graduate of University of Salisbury. Ensign Pataco is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Potter has been designated an explosive ordnance disposal officer and will be assigned to Naval Diving and Salvage Training Center, Panama City Beach, Florida. Ensign Potter is a graduate of University of California at Santa Barbara. Ensign Potter has been awarded the Chapel Clardy United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award for obtaining the highest overall grade in physical fitness while attending officer candidate school. Ensign Potter has also been awarded the Lieut Lieutenant Thomas Eady Award for achieving the highest average in academics, military training, and physical fitness while attending officer candidate school. Ensign Potter is a distinguished naval graduate. 
Ensign Powers has been designated a nuclear submarine warfare officer and has been assigned to Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Powers is a graduate of California Polytechnic University. Ensign Putcha has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Putcha is a graduate of American University of the Caribbean School of Medicine. Ensign Ramos has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Ramos is a graduate of Univers University of the Incarnate Word. Ensign Ray has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Ray is a graduate of the University of Mary Washington. Ensign Robinson has been designated a naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Robinson is a graduate of University of Massachusetts, Lowell. Ensign Rojas has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Somerset, San Diego, California. Ensign Rojas is a graduate of University of California, Berkeley. Ensign Singh has been designated a nuclear submarine warfare officer and has been assigned to nuclear power school in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Singh is a graduate of the Ohio State University. Ensign Somo has been designated a surface warfare nuclear officer and will be assigned to surface warfare nuclear officer school and the USS Farragut, Mayport, Florida. Ensign Somo is a graduate of Penn State University. Ensign Stewart has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to USS Ross. Ensign Stewart is a graduate of Purdue University Northwest. Ensign Stokes has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Stokes is a graduate of Texas A&M University. Ensign Stutzman has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Stutzman is a graduate of University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Ensign Thomas has been designated an intelligence officer and will be assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Thomas is a graduate of University of South Florida. Ensign Thompson has been designated a naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Thompson is a graduate of Brown University. Ensign Trainer has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Trainer is a graduate of Marywood University. Ensign Triana has been designated a Civil Engineering Corps officer and will be assigned to Port, Port Wyneme, California. Ensign Triana is a graduate of Florida International University. Ensign Trigueros has been designated a Nuclear Submarine Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Trigueros is a graduate of California State University, Long Beach. Ensign, Ensign Shu has been designated a Surface Warfare Nuclear Officer and will be assigned to USS New Orleans, Sasebo, Japan. Ensign Shu is a graduate of University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Ensign Shu has been awarded the Rear Admiral Stephen B. Lucy Award for obtaining the highest academic average while attending officer candidate school. Ensign Zachary has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Zachary is a graduate of the College of William and Mary. Ensign Zachary is a distinguished naval graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Navy's newest ensigns. We will now conclude the ceremony with the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal.
On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, thank you for viewing today's ceremony.